blessings. Welcome to my virtual yoga studio here on YouTube. My name is Tara Davey. It's also Laura, and I am a longtime yoga and meditation teacher based in Georgia and on the internet. I'm also a spiritual social media strategist working to bring the depth and integrity of the spiritual path into the digital space with all the tools at my disposal. And I'm also an integrative counselor. I'm studying social work at Florida State University right now. And through an internship, a clinical internship I'm currently completing, I'm offering counseling services where I weave the tools and teachings of yoga, meditation, and spirituality into the work of counseling and therapy. So that's my deal. I'm really happy to be here with you and glad that you have joined me for a practice. And the kind of practice that I am going to share with you now, instead of sharing a movement practice, you know, asana and poses, or even sharing a guided meditation, I'm going to offer you a philosophy talk, do a little discussion on yoga and spiritual philosophy, and then we'll do an embodied practice together so that we can really feel the concepts that we're thinking about in a tangible and embodied way. So what I'm going to talk to you about is a teaching that I am calling the four-sided diamond, the teaching of the four-sided diamond. And these concepts come from my spiritual teachers. These are, these are not my original ideas. They're teachings I've been gifted that I feel called to share, but the concepts come from my own teachers. My primary spiritual, spiritual teacher is an urban yoga monk named Swami Jaya Devi. She is the spiritual leader at Kashi Atlanta, an urban, ash, an urban ashram where I have done my studying of yoga and spirituality. And her teacher before her was an American spiritual teacher named Ma Jaya Sati Bhagavati. And so these concepts come from them and from their teachers, right? And I've never heard them explicitly say, this is called the teaching of the four-sided diamond. That's just what I'm deciding to call it so that I can share it with you in a tangible way. So the idea of this teaching kind of, it's really sweet to me. There's a lot of sweetness to it um, because it deals with the, the, the gems, the, the boons, the blessings of the spiritual path. And you see this idea a lot in Buddhism. In the tradition of Buddhism, there is a concept of the three gems, the three gems of Buddhism. And those three gems, kind of the three blessings or tools or gifts or pillars of the Buddhist path are the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, right? The three gems of Buddhism, the Buddhism excuse me, the Buddha, not the Buddhism, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And what those mean, the Buddha is the primary teacher, the master teacher in the lineage of Buddhism, in the Buddhist tradition. So the Buddha is the great teacher. The Dharma are the teachings, the path, kind of the instructions, the teachings themselves are what Dharma means. And then the Sangha is the community, the beloved community, uh, the spiritual brother, sister, and siblinghood that we find with other students of the spiritual path. So you'll hear this idea uh, taught about a lot in Buddhism. And the reason that I'm even using it as a jumping off point is I've been hearing about it a lot um, with my social media clients, my teachers in my life a lot. Um, and it's something that my, my teachers have been teaching about for a couple months now. And it feels like the teachings are settling in my consciousness in a new way. They're kind of integrating and it's starting to come up again uh, from, you know, I, I heard about it a couple months ago with my teacher and now it's coming up again in these different ways in my life. So I'm, I felt inspired to talk about it. So this kind of um, foundational concept in Buddhism, the three gems, there is a version of that for the yoga tradition. So the yoga tradition and the Buddhist tradition are very closely interrelated. Um, I've heard my spiritual teacher, Swami Jaya Devi, teach that Christianity is to Judaism what yoga... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get this precise. Christianity is to Judaism as Buddhism is to yoga. So Judaism is the root of Christianity. Jesus, the primary teacher of the Christian tradition, was a Jew. Um, and in the same way, Buddhism is sort of a, 
um, an offshoot of the yoga tradition. Buddha, the Buddha, the primary teacher in the Buddhist tradition, was a yoga practitioner before he uh, came to his own insights and started out on this on this path. Um, so Buddhism and yoga are particularly interrelated and there's a lot of kind of um, connected teachings in the two traditions. And it, the same can be said of this foundational teaching of the three gems, right? The Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, the teacher, the teachings, and the community. There is a yogic version of that, um, of that concept. A, a version that is rooted in the traditions of yoga. But instead of the three gems of Buddhism, there are four sides. There are four aspects to this in the tradition of yoga, which is why I'm calling it the four-sided diamond. And I've heard my teachers refer to this concept of the gems in the yoga tradition as the four sides of the diamond. So in Buddhism, if you have the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha as the three gems. In the tradition of yoga, you have the guru or the master teacher. Guru in yoga, although the term um, has been sort of loaded in our modern times, it's got a lot of, um, there's, a, there's a weight to it sometimes when you hear guru and sometimes it's even misused. Um, the traditional translation of guru is dispeller of darkness. So the guru is just the teacher that lights the path for you to see your way forward. So there's the guru, the master teacher, there are the teachings in Buddhism, they're called, they would be called the Dharma, but for yoga, we can just call them the teachings, the, the principles and practices and wisdom shared by the teacher and by the lineage and, and school of spirituality that you're studying in. And then there is the satsang. Uh, which is really very similar to Sangha. You can even hear the similarities in the words. Sangha is the Buddhist term for community. Satsang, satsang is the yogic term for beloved community, spiritual community. Your siblings that are walking beside you on this path of yoga, spirituality, deeper living, awake living and consciousness uh, with whom you can sit with in containers of growth, right? Um, community is not always like peace and love and bliss. Sometimes you bump up against one another uh, and there's some heat and friction in relationships, but all of that is the gift of satsang, the gift of having other people to grow alongside of you. And of course, I'm recording this uh, still during the COVID-19 pandemic where it's still quite difficult for us to be in person in community and we've had to become very creative about how we form and gather in our spiritual communities and so I'm feeling all the more grateful to and connected to that gift of the the sangha or excuse me the satsang <laughs> I'm going to confuse you now satsang is the yogic term that is comparable to the Buddhist Sangha. So we're talking about the, the four sides of the diamond in the yoga tradition uh, as they can be compared to the three gems of Buddhism. So we've talked about the guru or teacher, the teachings and the satsang. So those are sort of analogous, very similar to the Buddhist gems of the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. But you heard me say earlier in yoga, there's one more. If there are three gems in Buddhism, in yoga, there are four sides to the diamond strength offered by the spiritual path. So there's the guru, the teachings, the community, the satsang, and the self. The guru, the teachings, the satsang, and the self. And although it might seem like a small distinction, and these concepts in Buddhism and yoga are so interrelated, which is such a beautiful thing. I really love that distinction. That distinction really hits deep and speaks to my heart um, because although I value and honor the teachings offered by both of these beautiful traditions, these deep, complex, multifaceted traditions of yoga and Buddhism, the fact that yoga makes that small distinction to say, yes, the, the gems, the jewels, the treasures that you can find on the spiritual path do include the teacher, the teachings, and the community, but they also include you. 
it matters that you recognize, that we recognize, that we as ourselves are an integral part of the gems, the, the glittering treasure um, of depth and consciousness, love and awareness that can be found when we walk the spiritual path. So to recap and reiterate, though I've already done it many times, just to make sure you're super clear and tapped into this, in the tradition of Buddhism, the three gems, the three treasures and tools of the path are the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. In yoga, the four sides of the diamond, the treasure of the spiritual path are the guru, the teacher, the teachings, the satsang or community, and the self. Because we can't forget that we are we are the containers through which these teachings and this path unfolds not only do we matter in it but we in these bodies with these minds with these individual life courses have this unique we're in this unique position to embody these teachings and live them out um and though we do matter in it it's also it gives us an opportunity to say okay if myself is an integral part of this four-sided diamond of the spiritual path that also means i have a responsibility to go beyond myself to use the opportunities i have as a human in a body as a self in this lifetime on this spiritual path to serve others and to make the world better so that as many people as possible can experience this diamond radiance, this treasure, this deep toolbox and, and um, just conscious way of being that is the spiritual path. And you heard me mention, as, I, as I've discussed this concept of the four-sided diamond, you heard me mention the term diamond strength a couple of times. And I talked to you a little bit about how I first heard about this teaching, this four-sided diamond that can be compared to the three gems of the Buddhist path. I first heard this concept or heard of this concept Late last year, I believe. Yes, it was in December of last year when my, my teacher, my Swami Jaya Devi, was doing an immersion. She was teaching about um, our dharma, right? Our purpose in life. Um, and so she shared with us this teaching of the, the, the four sides of the diamond as it can be compared to the three gems of Buddhism. And she often talked about so many of the practices teachings breaths meditations so many so much of what she shared about um, was this concept of diamond strength when my teacher was teaching us about this this four-sided diamond this treasure of the spiritual path she often brought up this concept of diamond strength because when we're talking about the idea of the diamond in yoga and spirituality, it's not so much about riches, luxury, being flashy, right? That's not so much what it's about. It's about the diamond strength <laughs> because what happens to form a diamond? A diamond has to be put under immense pressure in order to then transform into the radiant um, form that it is. And that is sort of an analogy for the, the heat, the discipline, the work, um, the showing up over and over again that we do in our spiritual practices and on our spiritual path. And we kind of get um, heated up and we're a little bit under pressure, not in such a bad way, but just in like we... <laughs> We're, the, the best way I can think to say it is there's a little heat and friction for us as we do all these practices and that warmth and friction then reveals our radiance, our radiant consciousness. So that's what diamond strength means. means. So I really love thinking about this concept of the four-sided diamond for that reason as well. This idea of the diamond strength. This idea that these four sides of the diamond of the spiritual path, the teacher, the teachings, the community, and the self, 
uh, kind of provide us this blueprint to reveal this radiant diamond strength, the strength of the yoga practitioner, the strength of the devotee. Uh, so, so to me, that's what the four-sided diamond teaching is about. It's about embracing the, the tools and, and treasures and gifts and realities of the spiritual path and spiritual practice um, to lovingly, compassionately, honestly, and earnestly embrace the diamond strength, the diamond radiance of who we are when we show up to practice. And again, it's not just about doing this for ourself. It matters that we feel awake and good and content in it, but that's not the only thing that matters. We reveal this radiance and this strength so that we can then raise, you know, do the work to raise the levels of radiance and strength and consciousness in the world. So that's what I have for you uh, discussion-wise on this spiritual philosophy topic of the four-sided diamond. And now let's do an embodied practice so that we can feel not just in our minds, not just thinking, but really go into the feeling body and embody this idea of the four-sided diamond. And it's a really simple practice that you can do from wherever you are. And before we get into the embodied practice, let's just get into our breath. Let's embody some breath, the, the first most powerful and most accessible gem and tool on the spiritual path. So from where you are, just take a deep breath in through your nose, Release all the breath, the longest exhale you can without force. Just dropping into embodiment. Let's do two more breaths like that. Eyes can close or not, just breathing deeply. One more full breath. And exhale. Now bring your hands to a prayer pose. Pranam. You're pressing your right hand into your left, your left hand into your right, and your thumbs come to the center of your chest. This is both a gesture of balance as right and left meet, and it's a gesture of honor. You're, you're honoring your own heart and kind of offering your own heart in honor. So you're doing this pranam, this honoring, and for now you're facing straight ahead of you. And think of this facing, you're facing straight ahead of you as your relative north. Even if you're not actually facing the direction of north, this is north relative to you. So you pranam, you honor what's in front of you. You honor the north. And then turn to your right. I'm in a swivel chair, so I'm going to do it in my swivel chair. If you're standing, you can just step and turn. If you're seated, you can just scoot and turn. But turn to your right so that now you're facing your relative east. Again, it doesn't have to be east, but your relative east. Still, your hands are in pranam and you honor what is to the east. You honor this direction. You're continuing to breathe. Your jaw is soft. Now, turn in whatever way you're going to to face behind you. So that now you face your relative self, you pranam, you honor this direction, you honor what's here. And then once again, you turn so that this time you are facing your relative west. So you're turning to the right every time. Now relative west, you breathe and you pranam to what is here in this direction. And then you turn back to center. You keep your hands at pranam and you take a few breaths. Just the simple practice of honoring the four cardinal directions, which is another way to connect to and honor those four sides of the diamond, that diamond strength of the spiritual path. So just notice with your breath what it's like for you to kind of get curious about and touch into the four sides of the diamond. To honor the four directions, the four... Uh, tools and gems that you always have access to in your own way on your spiritual path. Getting curious about where and what your diamond strength is. 
your radiance, which in turn increases the levels of radiant light in the world. Not in a kind of ungrounded way, but in a really tangible, really community-based way that, in company, that uh, encompasses justice, peace, and equity. These two are pieces of the diamond strength. Just breathing in your own radiance. Breathing out your own radiance. Where is diamond strength for you? And then you can release your prayer pose or keep it. You can close your eyes if they're open. And I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for joining me for this philosophy discussion and embodiment, embodied practice on um, the gems of the spiritual path, the four sides of the diamond and diamond strength. I want, to offer, I want to offer a deep bow to the traditions of yoga and Buddhism, which are traditions that come primarily from South Asia, uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia. Um, the, culturally and ethnically, these uh, traditions are not mine. My roots are not in those areas of the world. So I want to honor the fact um, that these traditions are... Um, are classically Indian, uh, Southeast Asian, East Asian, uh, and just bow to the roots of the teachings that I've gotten so much from and acknowledge uh, that they don't come for me, they don't belong to me, but I honor them deeply. And to close, I want to just recite to you uh, a few lines of a poem that Ma Jaya, my, my teacher's teacher and the founder of my yoga lineage, wrote. And she wrote this poem about the Tibetan Buddhist goddess Tara, who is a deity or a form of the sacred, who is very uh, closely associated with this idea of the diamond and the diamond strength. So I'll recite this poem to you as a way of offering my love. A sheepskin on my back, between my legs, a yak. The diamond warmth between my cheeks, looking straight ahead the mountain peaks. I send you all my love. Thank you so much for joining me. I offer you a deep bow. Please reach out to me if you have any questions about what I discussed today, anything I got wrong. Like I said, these traditions um, and even these teachings don't belong to me. So anything I got wrong, please let me know. Uh, anything you want to connect on about this piece of spiritual philosophy or any connection you want to make, you can find me at Laura Tara on Instagram and Facebook. And my website is lauratara.com. So feel free to reach out. If you benefited from this teaching, please feel free to like the video, uh, comment, Comment and share and subscribe for more monthly yoga meditation and spiritual philosophy teachings. Take care. I love you and I'll see you next time.